We have the CQC handing out good but responsive to the urgent care centre. And clearly on this diagram, it wasn't being good and responsive. It, it was 65%. You're, you've got a plan in your head for what's going to happen in Jack Cross site. I'm guessing if it was something we'd all be delighted with, you, you might want to tell us that it possibly isn't something we'd all be delighted with, so you're keeping it back. Have you, we've already discovered there's a discrepancy here between how the numbers of the, these numbers are reached out and how the CQC measure things. I think that's exactly what you said is that they look at different things. How do we know you're not looking at yet another different thing for the modeling you're doing for the AME calculations? I just don't know. I can't tell what base numbers you're using to come up with what you consider to be a delightful service. So uh, I don't actually have access to the graph that you've got there, Councillor. Um, I hope something can show me one of them. I can try and work out what the best I can Sorry about that. And the bit it didn't match up with was the CQC rating here. And I guess my worry is that in turn won't match up with what you're planning for the replacement for Charing Cross Hospital. So, so this, if it's that graph, yeah. that's type one attendances. But I guess my point, of the, okay, the point yeah. I'm making is that the CQC assessment rated that as being an urgent emergency care, responsive, good, well there, caring, good, good, good. But clearly in this, these numbers, it's not good. So, and what we discovered earlier on was that they used two slightly different calibrations for measuring it. So we were, in some ways, comparing apples with oranges, I suppose, is the analogy. How do we know what calibration you're using for determining what good is that your measure of an AME? I don't know. And we do now know that there's inconsistency between this measurement and that measurement. How do we know there's not a further inconsistency between your measurement? So that in six months' time when this plan is revealed to us, how do we know that's got any basis in fact? Based on, there's good data around here. How have you modelled it? Um, so I think I would distinguish between something that's based in fact and something that's done on a different basis and therefore may lead to a slightly different conclusion because I don't think that either that graph or the CQC work was not based on fact. Well, um, it's it's well, well, the CQC, it's the CQC. Entirely different pictures. One says it's good, the other says it's bad. So the C, well, so the, the CQC was done in September, the inspection, so then we'd be looking retrospectively at the data previous to September. If you look at that graph on performance, I think I think one of the other councillors made a well, point well, about well, that earlier, which is pertinent to this well, point. That's well. not true, because that was we were told this was a later set of information, which is why they should discard the September data. Uh, the, no, the later data um, was particularly to St Mary's when they came back and re inspected in November. That was just the St Mary's A and again, so they re inspected off the back of the warning notice. They didn't go into the Charing Cross, and the Charing Cross inspection was based on the inspection of September. It's the same point, though, yeah. isn't it? Which is the data well, changed. I think there's an issue about. The data was, the data was improved across the piece here, and as it happens, when we look at the real figures, it's got much worse. And I guess that's what I haven't understood. So, yeah, so I think yeah. the, the, the CQC is on a range of quantitative data. The, the graph is a particular quantitative measure of attendances and the number of those that are treated within a period of time. So one is a much wider analysis than the other one is. Um, the data sets that have been used for the graphs are looking at the actual factual numbers of people who have attended and where they've attended um, is, is the basis for all of the activity-based modelling that supports the Shaping the House of the Future programme. We refresh those numbers very regularly, um, so the IMBC numbers have been refreshed compared to what was in the decision-making business case and so on. So we try as hard as we can to keep our data as current as possible in terms of the way that we are qualitatively looking at um, the changes that we are making. We have got a range of service standards, which includes things such as um, consultant hours and so on. So, so there is a whole framework 
for clinical decision making um, and the clinical case behind the changes as well as the activity based ones. So they have been in public in the DFBC. I'm sure there was information in the decision we took back in July that would also have shown how that modelling was, um, was undertaken. And um, at the point where we move forward into implementation of any further changes that might take place, that information would also be um, clear and be used in the assurance processes. I, and I, I can't speak for the CQC measuring thing, although it was a different period of time and a different methodology, but um, between I am confident that uh, between Imperial and the CCG, we have a, we've been working very hard on having a single version of the truth that we understand and we can recognise as what we think is going on. And that, that goes from everything through the, the number of types of cases through to how many people are fit to go home but haven't yet gone home. And so we have a large set of things that we now can sit in a meeting like uh, before I came here this evening, I was in a two hour meeting in Imperial going through this de detail and I can recognize it and the Imperial clinicians and management can recognize it. Okay, so we're going to have to uh, have a very quick comment from uh, 